What's going on people? Welcome back to another Ogano Talk segment. And today I'm going to be speaking about uh, the unnoticeable skill sets and comparing art to esports. So in particular I have Smash Brothers in mind and there's actually this entire petition going on to make Smash Brothers an official esports. But anyway, what I want to talk about in particular is uh, the uh, the amount of uh, technical aspects an esports game has can be compared to any other technical aspects or skill level that exists which include mathematics and art so um, so like art where a set of different art history classes are required we could also have Smash Brothers Melee history classes or Smash Brothers Brawl history classes it, it goes it's extended it keeps going and uh, and we can have classes on frame data but the main point I'm trying to get at is that esports has its own in-depth technical aspects to everything other that is a skill so I'm gonna be talking about a player named Zero and I'm sure Zero it got years for him for him to get into that top level uh, in the Smash community that he is at the moment so so it took just as much dedication that it took to get to that skill level just as much as it would take to get good at programming or art however esports is more risky than art and good thing though there's less pressure to succeed just due to the fact that it's not really noticed as an important skill set in society's eyes so the less pressure to succeed can also correlate to the seeking to experiment with different different elements so I feel everything should be treated as an experiment so on the topic of zero zero being one of the top players in the uh, competitive smash Bros. scene I'm sure when he first started out in tournaments he was at least you know better than most casual players but he wasn't at the top level as he is now in a way that he's better than most competitive players but then again and again there's always he, he did lose to Nairo but there's always someone that will push you to your limits but for the top 10 uh, players in Smash Bros they have an understanding of the technical high aspects of the uh, game that they're playing in particular and that goes for competitive games like League of Legends or Street Fighter I mean League of Legends I don't even know what's going on but I'm sure something is happening so I have this friend and he managed to constantly three stock me when we were playing each other and what three stock means is basically I couldn't touch the guy at all he would just constantly beat me to a pulp and I couldn't even lay a hand on him whatsoever in the game so there was a time where I thought he was a really good player until I saw him face off against someone who was really popular in the Smash Brothers esports community so when my friend showed me the replay of his match with that popular player or semi popular player he got utterly destroyed I could not fully grasp what was going on in that replay but there was some destruction going on in there and I couldn't fully grasp, grasp the technical aspects of what was going on compared to top players that could actually understand how a player plays just by watching replays of that player but for me I have to like actually personally experience the player for me to actually grasp what was going on so so my friend utterly destroyed me and he got destroyed by someone else and it was so surreal at the time to notice the extreme levels of skill or differences in the game 
So I was expecting during that match for it to be somewhat close, but it really wasn't that close. And the way I want to connect this is with art is that I didn't have the same level of technical aspects to analyze my friend's destruction. So and so therefore the same thing can be said for a beginner artist that doesn't have the level of perception to analyze what an experienced artist is doing. And, uh, so unless there's like practice involved to understand what it's like to get to that level, to understand that level, and to understand what one should practice to get to that level. So like for me, there are artists who are more experienced than me. And sometimes I don't fully grasp what's going on in front of me when I analyze it sometimes. But that that's like until I do a long analysis of what's happening in the artwork. And then I put that stuff into practice until it gets ingrained into my subconscious. So the more you practice the more it gets easier to understand technical aspects. And that's another reason why drawing from observation is important because it gets from 3D and then you just tra have to translate it to 2D. But it it'll be easier to translate it from 2D because you have that 3D experience. So rather you want to look at it from, look at something 2D from a c computer screen or a picture it'll get a lot easier from that practice of the 3D. And so the skill sets that are undervalued such as art, music, acting or anything artsy and something that's super undervalued which is competitive gaming. Why is it that they're undervalued? In our society Money is meant to be the uh, top priority and there are jobs such as a lawyer or a programmer or a doctor that are less risky than going into something that's in the arts, music or anything else. So since these are known to make the most money, I see that as that's what society will deem as the most valuable. So in this case, money is where people's attention lies. So imagine if we entered a world that just changed and reversed for a moment in which art was the most profitable thing in our society. And what's undervalued is the is technology and ma mathematics, various other things, then those then those topics from that parallel world would be undervalued as well. So I feel there needs to be a equal exchange of value. And in our world, once you become a success or whatever that means to the individual, the people that undervalued your skill set in the beginning start to value your skill set just purely due to the person's individual's success. So I've seen a lot of interviews from people and it's pretty much the same deal. It's like it's like the hero's journey in actual life. And me personally, I feel passion should be governed over money. Passion should be top priority. So yeah, these are just my opinions. I'm not I got exactly too sure what I'm gonna title this video. But uh, yeah, yeah. So leave a comment, fave, subscribe, and that's all for now. Peace out.